This is the classic Gravitron problem that every physics teacher is required to do. And in this problem, it's a, it's a carnival ride, and the riders line up around the interior of it, and it begins to spin faster and faster and faster. As that happens, you feel the wall pressing into your back harder and harder and harder, and we'll talk about sort of why that occurs. And eventually, it's, the wall is pressing into you so hard that static friction can hold you up against gravity, and the floor of the thing drops out, and you're just stuck to the wall. So we're going to try to do a force analysis here and figure out what's the maximum period of rotation? In other words, how slow can it go before people just start to slide down the wall? So a couple key features here. I have a radius of 5 meters. I'm wondering what's the maximum period, the most time it could take for a rotation before people start to slide down the wall. And then I would like to write this in yellow just so it's easier for me to see when I have to refer to it. So I'm going to go ahead and think about force vectors on this person. I'm going to give them a mass of m, and we'll assume it cancels out at some point. And I have the force of gravity pulling down. And I just realized I had some bad planning there, so I'm going to put m over here. And I have the force of gravity pulling down with the strength of mg. And then I have a person who is definitely accelerating toward the center of curvature in order to move on a circular path. That's going to be my positive direction. And then I, I have to ask myself, well, how can they be accelerating in that direction? There must be a net force pushing them that way. Um, oh, yeah, it's the normal force exerted by the wall. Okay. And gravity is pulling down on them, but they're not moving downward. They're staying at that same height. How is that possible? Well, the friction force must be holding them up. Okay, and we're looking at a cut point here where the friction force is maxed out and it's about to give up. So we know it's at its maximum value for the static friction. That allows us to use this formula for the static friction force. Okay, one more note before I get into the calculations is that I have the period of rotation here. I don't have the speed of the rider. The approach that I'm going to take is to just quote a formula for the centripetal acceleration that is phrased in terms of period. So I'm going to use this. All that is is a reworking of v squared over r where this is plugged in. Okay. So I think I'm ready for the, for the Newton's second law analysis, and I'm going to look at the y direction first. The acceleration is zero in that direction. Therefore, the net force is zero in that direction. Therefore, the, upper, the upward pointing forces balance the downward pointing forces. OK, x direction analysis. There's only one force pointing in the x direction. That's supplying the force necessary to create that centripetal acceleration. So I have n, that's f net, equals ma. All right, and then I have to figure out what to do with this algebraically. So I don't need n. I want to get rid of that. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here is actually take the bottom equation and divide by the top equation um, just because it looks easiest to deal with this fraction when I do the division that way. So let's just see what happens. I'm going to take the bottom equation and divide by the top equation. I'm not interested in the normal force, so I want to get rid of it that way. And then I have, um, again, the bottom equation. have that on the right hand side and then I divide by mg so the m's are going to can cancel which is a relief the n's cancel over here I can multiply both sides by mu s and I would just be left with a 1 on the left hand side at the same time I'm going to multiply by t squared so t squared is going to be equal to 4 pi squared r mu s 
over G. And that gives me a period of the square root of that stuff. Let me back up a second just to, to show a way to make this a little cleaner. I know I'm going to square root this, and the square root of 4 pi squared is just 2 pi, so I'm going to put that outside. It just looks cooler that way. And I have the square root of, I'm going to go ahead and call this mu s r over g. Plug in the numbers. I get 0.4, 5 meter radius of curvature. g is 9.8. And we'll figure out how slow this can, thing can move before people start sliding down the wall. And I get a maximum period of 2.84 seconds. Again, it's called a maximum because any period larger than that means the thing is rotating slower that means the normal force decreases, that means the friction force decreases, and the people start to accelerate down the